I start this. Uh, what was the impetus for, for the Sword and Sorcery EP? Well, we were all playing this uh, Zynga social game and we thought, um, man, those guys make a lot of bank. Um, yeah. What we should really do is um, clone it, but then just you know change it enough that we're not you know infringing anything legally. Mm, yeah. um, and then monetize. And then just monetize, monetize. gamify, yeah, and gamify. monetize some more. How long has Super Brothers existed? Uh, I registered the company in 2003 okay. um, with the idea of making pixel stuff with music on Apple devices. The iPod had just come out, right. the like, old brick version. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it seemed like that was the right uh, size, you know? And it seemed like Apple had kind of the right idea. Um, and then years later, the iPhone came out, and it seemed like that might be the kind of right form factor, the right kind of input, all that kind of stuff. And it reaches an audience that doesn't by dedicated game consoles, so it reaches kind of a broader, you know, population, right. which seemed really nice. I take it then you've been, you all have been playing games for, you know, since since you were children. Yeah, uh, yeah. I started out on the Vic 20. Wow. Yeah. And then the Commodore 64. Nice. And then the NES and all the rest of that stuff since then. And yeah, I really treasure those early games. There was something really pioneering and kind of abstract and amazing about them um, and I, I ours is uh, much more gentle and accessible mm. but hopefully it still has some of that kind of mystery and um, kind of sense of discovery that the older games had it's the aesthetics of a game that are most interesting to me the right. mechanics are interesting depending on how they fit into the concept but I've always been just really attracted to how it looks and how it sounds and mm. and what that kind of adds up to actually meaning It seems influenced by so many different things that it's not important to pick anything out, but I do like how, you know, it starts with the, the archetype in a, in a room and it's a very strange, sort of surreal um, narrative that begins to unfold. It reminded me of some of David Lynch films, you know, I, I really like how Lynch's movies, like oftentimes the narrative is happening in a dream, but the dream is is almost real enough. It's like, is this just weird, or you know, is this supposed to be fake? I mean, I really like his work, and uh, you know, I think I saw Lost Highway in '97 that made a big impact. Yeah. But I think one of the things I really like about what he does is there's this uh, mood that he's able to create, and there's sort of like this, um, I don't know, this audiovisual alchemy in some scenes that's like it's way more powerful in his films than it is in other films. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's that audiovisual alchemy that we were mostly going for. I mean, Jim makes this music, and I'm trying to wrap the art around it and kind of um, get something across mm -hmm. that the music is getting across. And then the game is sort of the, the way that that unfolds. That's sort of like the mechanic that lets you roll through it. That was our idea, basically. is like, let's try to figure out how to just get the music and the concept and the, the, the graphics to just feel like they're one thing. Side A being the whatever non-dream side, and side B being the dream side. They're almost mirror, not mirror images, but they're similar enough to one another where when something strange happens, it, it stands out. Mm -hmm. There's uh, an inherent connection between the two that right. you can feel and, and touch. You yeah, know, like it's, it's, it's not far enough away that um, they feel like two separate games or two separate parts of a game. I think they really feel like just, you know, two pieces of the same puzzle. Right. 